Welcome back. Today, let's look at an important component in our object detection neural network. This component called neck is responsible for refining or enriching the features extracted from various stages of the backbone neural network. In this example, I'll be using three feature layers from the backbone. But before that, let's figure out why we want to refine the feature maps from various stages in the first place. Here it is the same backbone, but I have drawn it bottom up. That is the input image is entering from the bottom. Something, something like this. Here I have an image of 416 by 416. It is a color image, so the number of channels are 3 and 1 here is for the batch dimension. I'm going to call this first green stage in the backbone low level features and the dimension for that will be 52 by 52 and the number of channels are 128. Another way to look at this feature map is that it is our image that has been downsampled by a factor of 8. The next level is for the mid-level features and the final level is for the high-level features that represent your image downsampled by the factor of 32. In my previous tutorials in this series, I explained that these features are fed into their respective detection heads. Now, this high-level features from this backbone have two important attributes. First, they capture the highest level of semantic information about your image. And second, it also has the highest receptive field. The semantic information increases as you go deeper into the neural network. Here, I have drawn the neural network bottom up, yet the layers that are closer to the output are called deeper layers. Now, think of semantic information as the most refined information or maybe as the global information about your input, something that represents your input overall. By the way, these features, the high level features, and by extension, the information they carry are also the least interpretable, meaning that we do not know really what these represent. These are very abstract information. The highest receptive field means that every cell in the feature map is capturing the information about a bigger portion in the original input image. Let me show that with the help of a diagram. Here is the image and the high level feature map of size 13 by 13. And please do not forget that the number of channels here are 5, 12. Now when we say a big receptive field, it means that a given cell in this 13 by 13 feature map would correspond to a decent size patch in the original image. For the mid-level features, the information captured in the cell in its corresponding feature map, 56 by 56, for example, would be for relatively smaller patch in the image. And because of this property of feature levels at various stages in our backbone, we require that the head for the high-level feature map will be responsible for detecting large objects. Similarly, middle level, middle level features will be for medium size object detection and the low level features will be good for detecting small objects in the image. Interestingly, while the low level features would capture less amount of semantic information, they would capture more spatial information. Please note my usage of highest and lowest. I'm not saying that the low level features or mid level features are not capturing semantic information. They are but not as much as the deeper layers in your neural network would do. Now that we have this awareness about the characteristics of these features from various stages, we can start to see that the head for mid-level and the head for the low-level features are kind of missing the semantic information that could help them do a better job at detecting the objects. Again, they do have semantic information, not, but not as much as the high level feature map would have. And so we wonder what if we could enrich the features at various stages from the semantic information captured at the deeper layer. And this is what was discussed in the paper titled Feature Pyramid Networks for Object Detection. This is a 2016 paper with over 17,000 citations at the time of making this tutorial in 2023. Basically, it is a very important milestone paper in the object detection domain. And here is in one line what this paper is about. 
note the notion of high level semantic feature maps at all scales this this paper is talking about all scales means the features from various stages in the backbone so the next obvious question is how do we do something like this as such this notion of bringing information from one layer in the neural network to another is not new we call it feature fusion for example you could do element wise addition of the features from two stages or maybe you can concatenate the two feature maps if you are familiar with the inception net family of classification neural networks then this kind of merging does happen in its layers uh, as well but i understand that initially it may sound bit strange especially if you are new to the field of neural networks at times it may feel that some strange things that the designer of the neural network architecture tried and somehow it worked but let's not get sidetracked by that maybe we'll discuss these things in some other tutorial but here we see how we could do this fusion of high level and mid level features first i suggest that we simply do an element wise addition of these features something like this now you should be able already be able to tell me that this simple approach would not work as such this operation given the current dimensions of high and mid level features will be invalid let me show you with the help of some code snippets here i have the tensors for high level and uh, mid level features that i might have obtained from the backbone right now i just have the random tensors but the sh they have the shape that i desire i do add using torch add api and i will get an exception the error is saying that the dimension of these tensors are different high level has 13 and ml has 26 now let's say by just some magic i have 26 by 26 for high level and mid level features and and we will try the add again but we will fail again because the number of channels that is the value at the dimension 1 is different for high level it is 5112 and for mid level it is 256 clearly doing the addition like this is not going to work so we need to fix the dimension issue first and we will start by making the channel dimension same for all the features from our backbone this is the first step that we will take and one simple way to do it is to pass these layers via a convolutional layer whose output channels are fixed here in this example i put 64 as the value of out channels you could use whatever you want really the kernel size is going to be 1 and the stride is 1 these operations essentially have reduced down the number of channels let's see the corresponding code snippet now now the the the, the truth is that i'm not going to use just a con layer i would like to have a batch norm and maybe an activation layer as well and here i am using a built in module from torch fusion called con 2d norm activation and this module lets me specify the activation layer that i use i want to use and the norm layer i want to use the, by default the norm is batch norm and act is uh, relu here i am using leaky relu a little fancier version of the relu let's start with our tensors for various feature maps and we create objects for each of them that is one per feature map and finally pass our original features from the backbone and get the reduced down transformed versions that is reduced down in terms of number of channels so here are the new shapes you can see that all of them have same number of channels now but the width and height are still different so element wise addition will still not work for us it will raise an exception interestingly you can see that there is some pattern because the hl feature map has the shape 13 by 13 which is half of the mid level features so so one extra operation that we could do is to up sample the high level feature map by a factor of 2 pytorch has the module to do just that you can specify how you want this interpolation to happen using the mode parameter here i have used nearest but there are other choices like bilinear that you could specify as a parameter for the up sample module object that you will create and as you can see the 
upsampled high level feature map now has the same dimension as our reduced mid level features that is 64 26 by 26 and finally we can do the addition operation on these features i'm calling it i'm calling it hlml fused Let's add the upsampled and element wise addition blocks to our diagram. We, we upsample and then we add them. Now, if I were you, I would not be happy with the fact that I did some upsampling. Kind of feel a bit hacky. And indeed it is. It was required though to make the addition operation happen, the so called feature fusion using element wise addition. But this upsampling is not really ideal. So to compensate for the artifacts that this upsampling may have introduced or would have introduced because it would have introduced really, we should add another con block and expect or rather hope that this additional layer will not only reduce the impact of upsampling but will also refine the fused features further. This block will not change the number of dimensions because I have set in channels equal 64 and out channels equal, equal 64 as well with a kernel size of 3. So let's add this extra convolution block as well. And the operation for the fusion between the mid and the low level features will follow the same steps. But note that we are not using the original mid level features from the backbone. Rather, we will be using the refined mid level features that we have obtained that have obtained the semantic information from the high level features so this way in this flow the high level semantic information has is is flowing down to not only the mid level but to the low level as well take a moment pause the video to see the flow of inputs i hope all this makes sense now in the description of this tutorial i have all the snippets that i have shown as well as one full module that ties it all together. That is, I have FPN neck module in which all of this is happening. But the implementation that I have in the CoLab notebook is for educational purposes because there I am using high level feature, mid level feature, low level feature, three feature uh, layers from the backbone. But if you want a more flexible implementation, for example, maybe your backbone has multiple uh, feature uh, maps, multiple stages. Then this implementation from the PyTorch Torch Vision package would be very helpful. It's a very flexible implementation. But please understand that flexible does not necessarily mean that it is more readable. So what I would suggest is that you read both the source codes, the one that I have in the notebook for educational purposes. But if you want to use it into in your project, maybe try the feature pyramid network from TorchVision. I hope you have started to think if this is the only way to fuse features and the answer is no. But what I have explained today should help you notice various opportunities for improvements and variations. For example, here I have used one con block to reduce the channels. Why not use more? It would increase the computational cost, but maybe help you get more refined features. The same logic can be applied for con block that operates on upsampled fused features. And even more importantly, we have pushed the semantic information down from the top layer. Why not push some information from the layers in the other direction? What's wrong with that? Let's talk about it in the next tutorial. My humble suggestion is to see all that I have explained as a framework. Because if you, if you would see it like that, you would be able to improve this implementation and or, or add maybe more components in it to improve accuracy or perhaps change the connections to reduce the computational cost. With that, I thank you for the time you've spent here. Wish you good luck with your learnings and your projects. Bye-bye.